Hi, I'm Bill Johnson, the featherweight guy. I'm going to talk a little bit today about the electrical system on your featherweight. This is, in my opinion, one of the most critical systems because it's the one thing that presents a real danger if there are problems with it. The, uh, the featherweight um, is made of aluminum, and aluminum is an excellent conductor. And the machines are ungrounded. If you look at the plug, they have a two-prong plug on the cord, which is an ungrounded plug. Uh, the third prong would be a separate ground. And machines that are not grounded are a little bit more dangerous because any electrical short in the machine means that this aluminum body will become electrified. And you touch it, your body then touches the ground, you complete the circuit, and that juice is all going to flow through you. So that's why I take no chances with the electrical system on a featherweight. I want to put in all new wiring. The original wiring that Singer used was very high quality at the time. Um, it's all wired with 18 gauge wire from the factory that had a thick rubber insulation and then that rubber was covered with a braided cloth covering. But the problem is the, um, the rubber dries out and cracks and the, uh, that cloth outer part also breaks down and so that insulation is prone to uh, coming loose, falling off and exposing the bare wire. And anywhere that bare wire can touch this body, this aluminum body of the machine, you have an immediate problem. So when I restore a featherweight, all of the wiring comes out and gets replaced with new. So let's talk about the gauge of the wire. <coughs> the uh, wiring is all rated uh, with um, by gauge, which is the thickness of the uh, strands that are in the wire. And some people say that 18 gauge, which is what I use and is what the Singer factory use, isn't heavy enough and want to see a heavier gauge wire. But let me explain why you don't need to do that. The amount of current going through the wires is a function of voltage and amperage. And those two things combined, when you multiply amps times volts, you get watts, which is the true measure of how much electricity is actually going through the wire. Now, I brought here is a uh, a common home appliance, a blow dryer. This one's rated for 1,875 watts. So if we take that wattage rating and we divide it by the voltage of the current in your household plugs, which is 115, I've done the math here, we find out that this blow dryer draws 16 amps of current, which means you can't even plug this into a 15 amp circuit. You have to have a 20 amp circuit in your bathroom or you're going to trip the circuit breaker. That's a fairly heavy load, and yet this is wired, it says right on the wire, with a 16 gauge wire. Now you may not know this, but every wire in your home, if you look very closely at it, it has printed on the jacket of the wire a whole bunch of things, including the gauge of the wire. So 16 gauge wire is enough for this blow dryer, which exceeds the, the current in a, in a 15 amp circuit. Um, and so Singer used 18 gauge. This is a, a replacement cord set from the featherweight shop. This is where I buy my replacement cords. And looking at the fine print on the wire here, this is 18 gauge wire. Um, and the thickness of the insulation can vary, uh, but that's not where the, the gauge is a measure of only the current, or excuse me, the, um, the wire inside the casing. This is the actual 18 gauge wire that I use that I get uh, online, and it's um, it has a, a two-coat, uh, a two-layer jacket on it, but it's fairly thin, but it's still 18-gauge wire, and this is perfect for a featherweight. So I actually use a kind of wire called pre-tinned. It's copper wire, but the strands are pre-tinned, which makes it easier to solder. So I get really good solder connections uh, using this pre-tinned wire. All right, so... When we talk about the wiring here, we really need to think about the total amount of energy this featherweight consumes. If we look on the motor, it's rated at 0.4 amps. Point, and this is, the, this is uh, the motor that's on all the featherweights, no matter the vintage. The earliest ones right up through the, the white ones in the 1960s, they all have a 0.4 amp motor. Which, when you multiply that times 115 volts, this draws a total of 46 watts. 46 watts is like 1 40th of the amount of this 1875 watt appliance. So we're talking about a very low 
amount of electricity going through that's but that's not the whole load the other part is the light uh, the incandescent bulbs that were in here were 15 watt bulbs nowadays we all use led bulbs in there the LED bulb draws a tiny amount of electricity compared to the incandescent. I think it's only around uh, one or two watts, so it's almost inconsequential. So we, uh, it actually, um, the total electrical load on here on a featherweight is very, very light, and that 18 gauge wire is fine. All right, let's talk about some other things. This is an as-found featherweight, and if we look here, you see, and this is very typical, this is the wiring coming from the light down to the power block and it's in a lead sheath and the reason it's in a lead sheath is because Singer wanted to make sure that those wires couldn't vibrate around and come in contact with these gears and you can imagine with these gears hitting, spinning at high speed when you're sewing if the wiring could touch that it would very quickly abrade through the insulation on the wire and you would have an electrical short. So Singer very wisely used this heavy-duty lead sheath. And the reason lead works well for this is you bend it into position, it's going to stay. But the problem is this lead over time oxidizes. So, so we get this white oxidized lead coating on here. And when I take a featherweight apart, this oxid oxidized material all crumbles off. It gets all over everything. It gets into the gears. It's a mess to clean up. And I know some people like to get rid of the lead because we now know that lead is toxic to human health. Um, but it's only toxic to human health if, it, if you ingest it or if it is uh, absorbed through your skin. Um, what I do is I wear gloves and I clean up this lead sheath. And then I actually encase it. This is heat shrink tubing that I get at Harbor Freight. It's a... Uh, a 5 16th size heat shrink tubing and that fits nicely over the lead and then you, you heat it up and so I, I've completely encased this so there's no exposure to lead and that allows me when I reinstall the light to bend it around and come to the power block with very high certainty that that wiring is never going to touch the gears because the lead isn't going to move and that's in my opinion better than what some of the other replacement light circuits have a plastic jacket on here. Well, the plastic jacket is very flexible and I have lower confidence that that plastic jacket is going to stay in place and never come in contact with these gears. So that's why I do that. So I've, I think it's a great solution. It means there's no exposure to lead and yet the wires are, are thoroughly encased. So those were the a couple things I wanted to uh, talk to you about today. Thank you.